So welcome to part two of how I started and stopped math. Uh, I think I left off in 94, right after uh, James had left and my old lady and I had split up. Well, uh, at that point I had started using meth pretty hard, attempted suicide, you know, that whole thing. and. But in uh, 95, I decided I I needed to get my shit together and, and try to do something, try to make a, some kind of life. And uh, I tried to get in the Army. Uh, I had gotten my GED. Um, you know, I, I, I did a lot of things to try to, to improve the quality of my life because I can tell you at that point my life was pure shit. And uh, it bothered me. I mean, <laughs> it was a tough freaking life, and it bothered me. But uh, I tried to pull myself out, and uh, I was rejected by the Army, because at that point in my life, I had a pretty extensive arrest record. Um, and actually, while I was trying to get into the freaking Army, I got arrested, which uh, didn't help my chances. So, after that, I uh, got a job with Atlas Van, Van Lines and uh, worked as a lumper. And a uh, lumper is just a person who carries boxes, you know, no specific uh, skills or, you know, brains required. But as I worked there, you know, I, of course I picked up on everything really quickly, you know, because there's really nothing to it, even with you know the complex part of inventory which is just nothing it's just looking at a piece of furniture and determining the amount of damage and whatnot you know just really stupid shit but I enjoyed the work and uh, it got me back into some some kind of good shape and or kept me in shape I guess you'd say at that point uh, up and I say up until about my 30s, I was in great shape, really. Well, not great. I say I was in really good shape. <laughs> but anyway, uh, from there, while I was working at Atlas Van Lines, I uh, started working with a guy named Brian Crow. He was a driver, and uh, me and him, we did a lot of jobs together, and he decided he was going to branch off on his own and, and become a a uh, driver himself and I mean own his own truck and, and you know owner operator is what I'm trying to get at and uh, he asked me to be you know come along and be his uh, accompaniment <laughs> and uh, I worked with Brian off and on for God probably all together about two years but that's also including the time that we spent down in San Diego and uh, he got his uh, owner-operator thing going out of uh, the uh, Atlas Van Lines in Hayward. So I moved up there. And I don't think I was there any more than six months before uh, everything fell apart. You know, uh, I was working on average anywhere from 12 to 18 hours a day with no days off, constantly working, constantly on the road, you know, I never knew what state I was going to wake up in or where the fuck I was going to be. Sorry for cussing, but that's how it is. And, uh, you know, at that time, it, that kind of lifestyle was, was somewhat appealing to me. But doing it every day got really old. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love to travel. I've been traveling since I was a small child. I've been traveling since I was a newborn. But, uh, you know, that that kind of thing, it just, it got old really fast. And, uh, that, and I had a falling out with Brian. And, uh, his, you know, he had a problem with me being on meth. And, and everywhere I went to, it didn't matter what state it was, if I knew anybody, or what was going on. I can always find meth. Always. It didn't matter. I mean, 
most people take one look at me and you know, see this sucked up little scrawny twisted looking dude and they'd be like yeah he wants some dope <laughs> and you know that's just how it was and by the way if you were looking to hear me tell stories about being on drugs you come to the wrong place I don't glorify what I did I mean I still smoke pot, but I'll I'll never glorify doing math because that shit destroyed my life. I mean, I'm 41 years old, and here I still live with my father, you know, which is absolutely pathetic. You know, it's heartbreaking to me, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's how it fucking is. When I, even when after I quit math, I mean, it's like starting over from high school. I mean, I mean that's what it's like. It's, it's like starting over from high school. And, uh, well, anyway, after all that mess, uh, you know, we, we had our thing, and I, I, I started living with this dude, I was paying $200 a week to sleep on dude's couch, I mean, and that, <laughs> in the Bay Area, that's not too bad, you know, uh, so, Anyway, my, at this point, my parents, they had moved to Oklahoma, so I got up with my mother, and I was like, hey, look, you know, this is this is how things are going, I, I can't deal with this shit, you know, and I'm ready to roll on, you know, move on to the next town, and uh, so I ended up getting a Greyhound out to Oklahoma, now, not to knock Greyhound, <laughs> but... Oh my god, you know, oh my god, a five day ride on a Greyhound bus, on the express, five days, five, Greyhound express, express, five days, but anyway, when I get to Oklahoma, and actually, Here's another crazy thing, is on, on the way to Oklahoma, I hook up with a dude in L.A. Uh, who's headed to Oklahoma, and he's a cook, a meth cook, you know. <laughs> you know, I might as well shoot myself in the foot every time I say something or do something or anything. I'm serious, shoot myself in the foot, just go ahead and get it over with. But, uh... <laughs> The whole way there, I'm hooking him up with weed, you know, because I actually, I took weed with me, which was just so stupid, man. I mean, <laughs> all the laws I was breaking just could have just totally put me away forever. But here's this dude, he's, he was gassing meth in the fucking bathroom of the, of the bus. And he's sitting with me. Uh, and we, we, you know, I hook him up with weed, he hooked me up with dope. I stayed awake the whole time I was on that bus. I remember every stop. <laughs> from from San Francisco to freaking Albuquerque. Even in uh, all the way to Tulsa. It was just, it was a crazy trip. But I finally get to Tulsa. And uh, this dude, he went on to Muskogee. And he gave me his number and everything. But he was one of those dudes where I got that vibe where I was like, like you know what? Not this one, not that dude, not him. And besides that one, we did stop in our Albuquerque. Uh, They're about to bring the dogs on the bus, and here's dude trying to slide his bag over up under me. I'm like, oh, son, <laughs> you better ask somebody. You're about to get fucking knocked the hell out right here. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, he was one of those dudes. He'd, he'd get you in trouble before he, he let anything happen to himself with quickness. But, uh, we, uh, head on to Tulsa and everything. Anyway, I, I didn't end up hanging out with him. Sorry, I got a little tripped out there. I was just thinking about all that whole mess and that ride. I mean, that was a crazy-ass ride. But I get to Tulsa... And uh, when I got there, I started working as a waiter in a Mexican restaurant, Mexicali Border Cafe, right there at 71st Street in in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So if you're from Tulsa, you stop there and ask them if Doug worked there. Hell, 
<laughs> I damn sure did. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I worked there for, I don't know, three, four months, I, something like that. It was crazy. I wasn't, I'm not a waiter. I mean, look at me. I'm not a fucking waiter. Even though I had the, the nice, you know, good looking cut and clean shaven and everything. I still wasn't a waiter, you know. I, I'm gonna, I'm a, I'm a builder. You know, I, I took shop in high school and junior high, wood shop, metal shop. That's what I do. I'm a welder by trade. But before that, I worked in uh, for like cabinet concepts and artistic creations and sawdust cabinets. You know, I was a cabinet builder, obviously. But. Uh, you know, I, I'm just not, I can't sit in an office, I can't sit behind a desk, except for this one right here, but that's only because I'm doing this whole thing. But, uh, I mean, that's just not who I am. I've got to be doing something with my hands, building, you know, I, I just can't just sit there. I can't, I can't be nice, it's, that's another thing, is I can't have direct contact with the general public <laughs> it's just better it's better I you know talk to the customer <laughs> I mean you know you give me a set of blues prints and say here build this I can do that no problem you know <laughs> you tell me to be nice to a customer and it, it could go south real quick <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> so I mean, I, I ended up quitting that job, and uh, I went and started working for United Van Lines, and I realized, you know, being on the low rung and trying to work my way up through a company, that's just, that's, it's not going to work, you know, that's not going to work. So I found a place up in, uh, uh, it was in Arkansas, right up there, uh, right up in that town that was hit by that uh, tornado not too long ago. But anyway, uh, they got a, a driving school up there, and I, was, I headed up there, and I uh, was going to take the test. And for some reason, I failed the drug test. Uh, which, I mean, but it wasn't the, I mean, they said that I had some sort of, uh, uh, I don't even know what you would call it. Something, something like where I test a positive for something like golden seal or some, you know, shit like that, like yellow root, which is, you know, something that drug dealer or drug addicts would use to to hide a drug in their system. Which at that time I wasn't doing nothing because I didn't know anybody in Tulsa. It was crazy. That was Tulsa was one of the few places where. The people there who did meth, I mean, because when I first moved there in 98, meth was kind of under the table. It hadn't made its big intro on the street. It hadn't destroyed, you know, the, it hadn't destroyed the Midwest when I first got there. It seemed like right when I arrived. When I left San Diego, meth was the capital there. When I, you know, and when I get to the Midwest, all of a sudden meth is, you know, that's the capital of meth there. All of a sudden, hell, I lived in Castville, Missouri. You know, I. They even did a, a a thing on that. One of my other buddies, he lived. You know, that's who I stayed with. We used to work in Springfield at uh, Trinity Rail Service building trains. But anyway, back to where I was. I didn't really know anybody when I first got to Tulsa for like a couple of years, so I didn't do math and for. I, okay, for the first six months I wasn't there. When I got to Tulsa, I weighed 160 pounds. Six months later, I weighed 260 pounds. 260 pounds. Uh, I got fat so fast, I had stretch marks. I had stretch marks on my stretch marks. And uh, the ass to prove it, right? But anyway. So... I end up uh, going to Tulsa Welding School, and uh, I got my master welder's degree, and you know, I can weld, 
you know, structural, pipe, whatever. TIG mix, TIG flux, coarse, subart, oxyacetylene, braze, solder, whatever. You know, if it has to do with fusion, just give me a call. But, uh, I did welding. Once I started getting into welding, God, I had more money than I knew what to do with. And, and by that time, I had made a, uh, <laughs> I had met a few people. And, uh, not only did I fall back into math, but, God, I was doing amounts that I had never dreamed of doing before. I mean, where, where you do an eight ball within about 30 minutes. Woo, you're talking about hearing the fucking train coming, buddy. People can't even imagine what it was like to be on meth like that. You know, people always talk about, oh, I was ODing, I was ODing. <laughs> you don't even have a clue, buddy. You don't even have a clue. Not that it's a contest, that's another thing. I, I, I really wanted to stress that, but you really don't. <laughs> It's not a competition, but uh, until you start doing meth on, on that kind of scale, you you don't realize what your body can take. And uh, I think the only reason that my body was able to take everything that I put it through was because I was an athlete before I ever got into drugs. I played soccer for 12 years, which was an endurance sport. I wrestled in high school, which was an endurance sport. I loved to run. Uh, I was a surfer. So I was a high endurance athlete, and uh, I stayed that way until uh, you know I was about 18 years old, and then that's about the time where I really got heavy into drugs. Well, a little after that, but you know what I mean. And uh, but anyway, I I I, I think that's what uh, kept me from dying all the times where I should have. I mean, where if someone who didn't have my background, I'd done the same thing I'd done, there's no doubt in my mind they would have died, you know, <laughs> and there's a lot of dudes who have done that, you know, go out and shoot up a gram and kill themselves, whereas someone like me, I could go out and, well, not right now, but back when, I could go and shoot up a gram and be like, yeah, rock and roll, buddy, I'm driving, back up. crazy god I look back at the shit I did and I'm just like how the fuck did I survive how I don't know I couldn't tell you I mean so many years of doing math so many years of doing just insane stuff stuff where people would go god you're, you're crazy there's something wrong with you and I look at them and go yeah <laughs> 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 I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, I, I can see it in myself, and I could, you know, especially when I was on meth, I would get that rush that, I mean, I was an adrenaline junkie before I started doing meth, you know. I'd go out, paddle out in 15 foot surf, you know. Paddle out in 15 foot surf. You survive that, and, you know, shooting up a gram didn't seem like nothing. I've done that. I've done both of those things. I remember in, in uh, sixth grade, elementary school, you know, I, I did a, 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 a bike for breath, and I rode my bike 30 miles, you know, which to me is really nothing. I could have gone a whole lot further, but I got up with this dude, and we started smoking pot, you know. <laughs> it's just crazy. <coughs> But anyway, moving on. As the years went on of working in in weld shops and being able to afford a whole lot more meth and, and uh, even getting to the point where I'm hanging out with cooks and you know getting it at ridiculously low prices and that's the thing. I I could have learned to cook at any time, but I chose not to because I know I I know I would have I would be dead right now. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if I'd started cooking. 
And uh, he probably sitting there going, well, didn't you want to commit suicide? Well, yeah, I did. But, you know, after the first time and all those things happened, you know, with the guy who had the seizure and the baby with the, uh, spine, you know, possibility of spinal meningitis and them having to do the uh, spinal tap and giving the woman's child a 50-50 chance of living, I mean... I wanted to live, you know, and plus I, I had my little girl at that point, you know, I, I don't know, my daughter had a rough life, you know, she, she had a rough life, I tried to leave her kind of out of all this because, you know, I wasn't there as a father, uh, you know, especially during those years and the times that I were, I did nothing but hurtful things, you know being with her mother and just you know the whole thing just all of that just was was too much for me to bear and that's why I got so deep into drugs I think after that point you know and then the suicide attempt and, but moving on there things started you know getting kind of weird for me as I was going on in my meth addiction and I realized that uh, every time I did meth something would change and at this point, I, uh, I had been, I had gotten with this new girl, and, uh, and I say girl, she was only 19 years old, and I was 29 years old, and, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, she was, she was twisted, she, she had, I had kind of gotten backed away from meth at this point. I mean, I'd use, like, on the weekends. You know, I wasn't the hardcore junkie that I was. I had lost a few more friends. Uh, one in particular, a guy named Nick that uh, I worked with. and well, This guy was crazy. He saved my life one day when uh, I was working at Cooper Manufacturing, and I built uh, mobile drilling rigs for oil drilling rigs. And uh, <laughs> I was working on a reefer one, and this thing, I mean, it was leaking hydraulic fluid, oil, you know, and it was totally caked with, you know, mud and the oil mud, that the, the raw raw shit that they drill up. I mean, this this rig was nasty, and I was going through, and I was cutting. Cutting stuff out, cutting the catwalks out, cutting out plating and everything. And we had about, I don't know, probably 60 or 80 bags of floor dry down underneath this this, this huge mobile drilling rig. And uh, I'm cutting, you know, all the stuff out. And I'm not really paying attention. I, I'm supposed to have a, a guy out there on fire watch watching my back and... Uh, after a bit, I, I realized that it's really hot. I mean, I'm burning up up there. And I'm, I was at the, on that particular day, I was wearing my full leathers. And, and, I mean, I could feel all this heat. Well, all of a sudden, I get this really acidic, you know, breath. What it is, is it's the, uh, the uh, powdered, powdered uh, 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 fire extinguisher smell. And I, I pop my 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 uh, cutting goggles up, and I look, and and I notice it. You know, I've got people all over around the rig that I'm on with fire extinguishers, and uh, I crawl around uh, the clam, which is the big spool on a uh, mobile drilling rig for the uh, the the lines. And uh, look around down in there, and the hole underneath the, the rig is on, on fire, totally engulfed in flames. So I go around, I jump down off the rig, and, you know, get down, and here's this guy, his name was Nick. I always called him Nick Papadopoulos, which it wasn't his real name, but that's what I always called him. But his, his first name was Nick. This guy had no teeth, you know, or had a tooth, and they could pop it down. Barry King off of his fucking smile. <laughs> this dude, the very next day, he brings in a hat. Yeah. You know what? I got that hat. Actually, go ahead and grab it.